Now is your chance to hear him. Great to have you here. Please, Erwin, welcome. Wow, thank you. Thank, me, thank you for having me. Hey, um, Erwin is my name, Erwin Boromans. I'm working at Vocational Training Center Live um, in the southern province of Finland. We have around 1,100 students with special needs in basically the triangle between Lohja, Tikurila and Porvo. The biggest units where we work are, we have around 200 to 300 students and the smaller units then again, they're like, um, I think, between 20 and 30 students. What does it mean now? I'm a PE teacher in physical education in special ed, so it's upper secondary education. So, ammattikoulun puolella, ammattiopiston puolella, um, basically, we have smaller groups, we have more aids within the school, and then again, why I'm here now is because I've been an outdoor freak myself all my life since a small kid. I just loved being outside, loved being dirty. I was a scouts boy, but then also like being outside was just freedom for me. And I have a question for you, the audience here. You know, who feels himself really that you belong in nature? You can raise your hand or stand up or scream, yeah, me, me. So yeah, I, I, yeah some of them, some of us get excited. So I think most of us, we have like a, a biased group here, I think. But the topic of, of my talk today is everyone belongs outside. And I don't know whether you've noticed, but the slide before there was still a question mark in Heli's presentation. And I think what I'm trying to offer you today is kind of a vision we have at school. Um, I have here a perfect five, five colleagues with me here um, who will sign the same story, just that the inclusive part of being outside is sometimes not really well yet enough understood. I'm trying to offer in the beginning 10 slides about inclusion, certain models, how we can make inclusion easier, how me, we can uh, get easier inclusive settings. After that, a small video from a winter outdoor camp, then I'll tackle that for a while. Ten slides, we'll go over a Puda Sjarvi camp, and then again a small video of a minute, and then I'll try to just, using keywords, trying to get you as passionate and um, excited about outdoor special ed as I am. <laughs> People often say like, how, how come you're 20 years at the same working placement? You know, you could be professor at university. That's just, I just love what I'm doing. And I'm standing here proudly. I, was, I had a, sh a, sh a sh nice shirt as well, but I said, you know, no, I want to put my leave a t-shirt because many people, this is something I've noticed over the last few days, they're wearing their working clothes here as well. Even though this is work, it kind of feels like free time as well at the same time. So to get us really started, I would like to do one thing that we can do all together, that it's not just a monologue. So I would like us to all stand up for a while. And I know we use three languages today, so if I ask a question in your mother tongue, you can answer. If it's the question that's not your mother tongue, then just be silent still. How are you? Is it your mother tongue, Lena? Mite kuulu? Hur storde till? Yeah, so I think English-speaking people are the minority here, right? We'll do the trick still in English. So show me your thumbs. Right hand, thumb up. Yes. Left hand, you have a neighbor next to you. Do you mind, Heli, joining me? Oh, you, have, you, you don't have to. Yeah, I help you. Up. So we'll do a very short one-minute exercise that will make us 
feel well and will able to follow the, le the rest of things. So what you'll do, thumbs up, and at the other hand, you put your hand on top of the, your neighbor's thumb. You might want to do this at home in a circle, right? Now you just play that there is somebody else there. And on the count of three, I will say one, two, three. Be careful. You try to pull down your thumb, but your neighbor tries to catch it at the same time. Ooh, yeah, we're getting there. It's almost like the cuckoo from the nice song before. So are you ready? Are you all ready? Yeah, OK. <laughs> Breathe in for a while. Breathe out. And one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. who, who could grab it? You, you could grab it? Yeah. Let's do it one more time. If you can grab the thumb from your neighbor, or you just feel in the mood, you can make a little dance. OK? Yeah. Ready? One, so only when you hear three, right? <laughs> One, five, <laughs> seven, three. <laughs> no dancing? Yeah, okay. Uh, good. And now please have a seat and we'll start working. So it was fun for you guys so far, but oh, this is the nice part, right? <laughs> We're all good? OK, well, I'll just get started. Um, I think the mail, oh, we get pictures. Cool. If I would ask you as well, what do you enjoy about being outside? Any throws in the group? Just if you say it in loud, I can translate it through the mic. What do you guys like about being outside? Silence? Silence? Yeah. What else? Fresh air? Fresh air? Blueberries. Blueberries? Beautiful colors? Sports? Spring breeze? Say it again. Awesome. Awesomeness, beautiness, right? So uh, would you agree if I say, like, people frequently say, it feels just good being outside? I like being with other people. I have a gut feeling that people who have joined this conference, they kind of like being outside but I also like to be with similar-minded people. And that's the reason why we are here, to share ideas, share emotions, and also learn new things from each other. I think in Finnish, it's a very beautiful word. You know, my mother now is, is Dutch, right? But it's risti pelutus. Just, it's just beautiful. It fits with this really well. A sense of freedom, the fresh air, feeling close to nature, I like also being challenged. Sometimes in nature, you not really know what's coming up or what is ahead of us. Now, if we get back to the special ed situation, what do you think people with disabilities enjoy about being outside? Same things? Oh. Yes. Same things. And the reason why the same things is just because they're just like us. They're just different. They're just in another way special. And if we can start with that attitude and think about what I would call ability, then we have a good shot of, like I didn't know I was doing adventure education before I started reading about it, it might be you guys do also very inclusive outdoor sessions without realizing it. And I'll try to propose you a small framework, some tools that might help you to make it more easy to tick the boxes. OK, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, to give you kind of a framework for the things we are doing. Sometimes 
just using our gut feeling. Yeah? This picture, by the way, is from last winter, so a few months ago in Finland, right? <laughs> On the eyes of Saxi Jarvi, Nurm Jarvi. You see, um, I was impressed when we opened the conference. One of the first slides was about uh, the safe space, right? The way we communicate with each other, the way we behave with each other, but also like safeness in a school situation, we often have to tell our supervisors, okay, all kind of safety sheets, turvallisuussuunnitelmat, they're long, but it's very important to have the things also on paper. It's very important to have the staff trained enough because the skill level of us as teacher, teachers or assistant teachers compared to the students that we take out on adventures, you should have almost three times higher skill level than the people you teach. If you're not convenient yourself but going to pack raft, then it might not make much sense to take somebody who might not be able to swim, right? So here you see a boy, he's normally using wheelchair, he's sitting now in an expedition sled, like Fjellpulken Achkio. Um, he has a, a big support at the back, he has a, U, a big U pillow in front so he can have a good position, and we are biking, biking on the lake. The lake is frozen, where we are biking there, it's, it's frozen till the bottom. Umpias, I think you call it, right? But why I liked it a lot, I was working hard. He was enjoying hard, as like, Erwin, go faster. So the thing was, we did together a small activity that was new to him, not so new to me, but we created a bond. And it was something, next time we met each other, he said, like, hey, remember on the ice, you know, you were pulling me in the sleds, and yeah, and yeah, you were telling me how hard to go. A and those are the kind of things where we may get step by step closer towards think ability. We might leave, them, you know, sometimes staff members, I have a battle at work, you know, every second day, telling them, you know, you know let's, let's just let's give it a try. Yeah, but that student is in an electric wheelchair. I'm not sure it might work in a pack raft or on a kick bike or on the beach. You know, we've sometimes in blankets traveled from the wheelchair to the canoe. We've ev even made such a own made bench that we can transport them from the wheelchair straight into the kayak. I think, I, I assume at least all Finns know that very, is it Scherweck's painting, the broken angel? Am I right? Where the angel sits in the chair, and she's be, we, it looks like that, the chair, right? Okay. So, Ulos Ut out, the word I would add there is adequate support. The way we do it, I'll tell you soon as we go. I had a chance uh, a month ago to travel to Iceland um, to meet Jakob Freeman and Thomas Elschwer. Some of you guys might know this kind of gurus in, in my field of, of outdoor education um, on an Erasmus Plus project. And we had a shared session there at the University of Reykjavik with Thomas. And we had a really nice discussion and it just stayed into my mind like the difference between being outside and doing outside. Especially, you know, when it's not our mother tongue, it might say, eh, you know, <clears throat> if you be outside, doing outside, is there a different active component? I try to a little bit um, shake, <laughs> my hands were first shakers, in that way that active component doesn't always mean that we are there physically, by ourselves. You know, most of us remember Corona time in a school setting, especially special ed. We were almost thinking at the end, you know, physical education teacher, Corona, we were closed for more than a year. It was like kind of, hmm, how do we do this? And even there, you know, for example, this picture, what do you see on the picture? Tell me. Ice fishing? 
Yes. So there's one of our staff members. There's a boy sitting on a potkukelka, on a kick sled. You know, the mumokelka on the ice. They've drilled the hole with the axe. And he's ice fishing. And he seems happy, right? I think we can agree on that. So based on this picture, I had once a one-hour physical education session. Just asking first question, what do you see? And then it was, and how big the fish you think is that he can catch? And then students were showing that big, and then they were drawing. And then, for example, one question might be, and how did he get that hole? And then one student went to the, to the mic and, you know, on teams or at meets, he was like drilling and then, okay, let's drill all together. You can try, who has been drilling a hole in ice? Yeah, show me how do, the way you do it. Well, are you do it sitting? I stand up. <laughs> show me the way you do it. I always stand up. I've never seen somebody drilling a hole sitting, right? So starting from a picture, we got kind of different physical activities. So it's not always, you know, we need to think out of the box. And the same is also with things we do in education. So we think ability. And sometimes it doesn't always work. But we have the right to screw up as long as we learn from it, right? But based on safety features and those things, those are not the places where we take risks. Those are all set in stone, double-checked, safety equipment is there. I assume you saw the biking picture from where the, there was Nazca lit, ice picks in the neck, helmet on the head, etc. So there, that's very important to create also a hard skill safe environment and then also the safe environment for all the other soft skills. I think then we are getting far. So. I sometimes get gray hair. Did I say this in loud? Uh, people um, using a lot of that no, don'ts kind of thing. My first job in Finland in 2001, I was in Sola Kalion Koulu in an um, autistics class. I think they were like seven, seven, eight, nine years old. And I was just, I was tall, I couldn't speak Finnish, but I was fast. That was the reason why they, and I was interested, probably, as well. I was uh, paid there um, to do Kuperkeka Kerho, like rolling groups. So I was designing the things, and then they said, okay, that guy, he's really fast, you know, he might be able to help in the classroom. And then I got two very quick boys on the autism spectrum, you know. They couldn't handle them kind of, and I, I, I had a very tough time myself. My role was just keeping them on their chair in the beginning. And that's where I got kind of in the field of special eds and in the field of autism and afterwards did my PhD about the field because I just wanted to learn more. You know, this is not normal, you know. They're just running behind those kids all day and there, there was too little structure even though it was a special school. And then started to, to work on it and work together and trying to make some changes into the the things, and always my main focus was on what can they do? Not why can't they? They can't sit still. They can't eat properly. I said, yeah, but, you know, they can run very well. You know, they might be able to eat their blueberry pie. That's for you there, right? Blueberry pie very well, etc., etc. In 2010, so I'm trying to also picture a little bit the pathway to this, this point of time. Um, as I did not know about outdoor education so much, but I was a teacher bringing my education outside. Um, in APA, Adapted Physical Education or Adapted Physical Activities, um, we have talked a lot about inclusion the last 15 years. You know, nowadays in Finland, it's, we take it all for granted. But, you know, 20 years ago when I started, it, it really wasn't. Um, and two gentlemen, Ken Black and Peter Downs. Peter is an Australian, and Ken is from, from Britain. I've met them on a symposium um, in APA, and they were just starting off with the Inclusion Club. And the reason why I put it on here as well was just, I hope that after this talk, we can be an inclusion hub. 
within the field of outdoor education. I mean, you know, a hub means in English it's like the center of a wheel. You know, we, that's where, where basically it turns, it doesn't turn, but it makes the wheel turning. So we can really take the things that we might have learned to home and, and spread out the word that we should take everybody, everybody uh, amongst us along the way. I promised some things about inclusion. Um, another wheel, you know, we go from a hub, the center of the wheel, to the inclusion wheel. I know it's a little bit theory, but I think it's good for us to know the different, the different areas of inclusion. So it might be, for example, there are no modifications whatsoever. For example, I had few old students last weekend in Vanta Triathlon participating in the Kilpa Kunto Sarja, just among others. No differences, they just enrolled, went there, and that's it. There might be minor modifications. I had other students enrolling there as well. They took part in a smaller triathlon, where you were able to take a spaghetti under your arms if you weren't able to swim a lot. You were able to use a tricycle, a tandem bike, um, a guide to keep you on track while running. So that's minor modifications. Then, for example, you might do within the inclusion wheel major modifications. For example, this is from the Paralympic Games, you know, um, disc throwing. In the paras, they sit down, they get extra support for their hands, and they swing then the, um, the disc like that, where the others, they turn around, so it's like, it's a bigger modification. Then it might be primarily for people with a disability. Tandem biking, primarily, but it doesn't need to be. I was, for example, as an exchange student in 99 for the first time in Finland. I was playing with Tony Pispanen, who is at the ministry working at the ministry quad rugby, tetraplegic rugby. And I think I, we were two guys who were just, well, normal is the wrong word, but just neurotypical, not, we didn't have any tetraplegia, but we were playing amongst them. So primarily for people with disability. Then it might be also that students take a non-playing role. For example, somebody doesn't want to go to Kenyu because it's just, it just not his thing, but he wants to participate of taking pictures of the others or helping to clean the Kenyu afterwards when the other want to go and eat, when they need more time just to be by themselves and reflect on things due to some challenges they have in life. Yeah? And then at the end, the last one, only for people with disability. Then we're talking often about para games, Paralympic games there. None of us can answer unless you fit the criteria, okay? This is something that helped me a lot to put inclusion into the framework. Tree, if you remember tree and see it as a poo. Four strategies for inclusion. Teaching coaching style, we can adapt it. We go on the level of the students. If somebody sits in a wheelchair, I often kneel. You go the same level, feels way more comfortable. Talking about the safe space, again. Rules and regulations, we adapt rules, regulations, that there is not always winner or loser, that it's kind of more a mixed game. We can change the environment. For example, we have been 20 years in Oita, in Espo, I don't know, there are People I know in this room that have been there, they became, there, there is like um, Esteten, an adapted sideway to the beach. There is a special, a special dock to do kayaking with people with special needs. So um, environmental and equipment changes are made. If we put it all together, you get the inclusion spectrum, the three model together. Just think about ability and use your gut feeling, and you will get far. It's sometimes duct tape solutions that work the best. You don't need 20,000 like, special ramp to get started. You know, sometimes it just, if you are handy, wood things, just bring the ID, and then it comes, the rest comes from itself. Okay, I think it's time for a little video from our adventure camp. So we can jump from a little bit theory now to more practice. Lots of pictures and small video from uh, the winter camp. Yes.
Thank you. Let's make a quick, a quick change. We can take the next video now and then jump to the slides for after the video. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's take both videos now, because otherwise it will be a rush at the end. And let's, let's not have a rush. So we go from winter to spring. So just to put you on the map, um, every group that we work with at school, they get two one-day kind of getting to know each other camps in, in Nuxio or in Saxe or in Espo. Uh, and um, on top of that, we have also, we offer such a, um, a choice, a course of choice of three study units. The ones in winter have been till now in Pudasjarvi. We are moving to Koli, close to here, next year. And the ones in, in the autumn have been in Repovesi, in the Repovesi National Park. So you get kind of picture material from kind of things we are doing. After that, I try to wrap it up in 10 slides still with keywords and tell some stories about that. Okay. No niin. Joko eksyttiin. For the ones who were quick watchers, it said, Osal is to Yavoy Hubin. So, lots of the equipments you see on the videos are equipment we were able to buy through projects. League of Opitskelu, we had four years of funding. So, we have Sauna, Delta, Trangiat, um, fat bikes, expedition sleds, um, kick sleds, forest skis. Um, gliding snowshoes, etc., etc. Um, many people ask, you know, how is it possible that you can do those things just day in, day out? So over the last 20 years, we've tried to gather a kind of set of equipment that allows us to do those outdoor days a anywhere, basically. I think, was it six years ago, we had kind of a big sum of money left, and then I, I had dreamed from a... a portable lavu. You know the lavu in Finland, you know, in wood? So we have a big trailer, it comes soon on a picture, where we can open the sides and there's like grass mats in the trailer. So you can sit on there. So we designed it ourselves. The wheels are under the trailer so you don't bump into the wheels. And all our equipment fits in there. We can fit 10 bikes plus pack raft, plus portable toilets. So basically we can have an outdoor day with kids with special needs in which anywhere at the moment. But it didn't take one year, it took 20 years to get that set together, right? Okay. The video we had, and then the next one. Let's see. Okay, yes. So, if I try to wrap it up in 10 keywords, hashtag learning, learning by doing. I think everybody agrees, if we can, in small pairs, do things, get on the same level, and get doing things that are fun anyway, often we might even get people with special needs very excited about the things. They might really rouse, arise out of their own persons, like, oh, well, basically, this is really cool. I should de do this more often. But sometimes, you know, in the same area, this is in Repovesi, we rent such a varaus leerinta alue. You know, you can rent a small, like, it's a piece of ground as big as this, close to the lake. You have a, a nice shelter, you have the toilets in there, and it gives you kind of a little privacy, and also a kind of an area where you need to stick in. Um, this student, he wanted to go and do some woodwork by himself. And because it's a safe environment, you know, you see this is a very good and safe way to cut the things. He was there and he was just enjoying, he came very happily back with a full bunch of woodwork. We have a step-by-step -step approach. It is sometimes we make things ready, pump up the kayaks already, when we are in a rush, but we break them down together, clean them together. 
But often when we have the time for it, we do it from scratch till the end together. So we, we do the whole process together. Unfold, pump with the backs, for example, back rafts, do dry land exercises and go from there. It's up to us being educators, we need to facilitate. But sometimes it just comes from, ooh, sorry, it's ooh, ooh, way. it comes from itself. We were having a small track on the ice and she was very excited. Hey, how do you do the turns when it would be steep? So I just quickly choked and then she was exercising herself like doing the touring ski turns. It's a very steep hill in Saxe. It's, I think it's 25 degrees. Or here you see he can't support his arm by himself. This is a 10 euro just yakara. It's supported and he can do the ice fishing by himself. And normally it's only an electric wheelchair. He can just ride by himself. But now he was there on the ice on special equipment. You know, he was pushed. I was sitting on this kick sled and I was pushing, kicking the kick sled and he was in front of me tight and we could make a nice trip together. Facing challenges. This was a challenge, block sugar low, famous geisha banana. <laughs> My colleagues smile here in front. And this is one of the pictures I liked a lot from the last few years, the picture in the middle. First time we were with a new bunch of people in Pudasjärvi, Anin Tuvalla. And on this picture, there is a person who basically has been using till then only wheelchair. And this was basically the first time on a picture that she stood up and she was really proud of it. There in the middle, you can't even see where she is. But that was for us as a team also a big moment. And the growth that that young lady made during that week was just amazing. It, it's something, it's, it goes beyond uh, normal understanding. She came in, she had a personal assistant that even tightened her shoes, brought her almost everything. And, and because we took a few steps back, sometimes, you know, there was, it was not very accessible. Eh? We needed to find solutions. There was no ramp going into the house or into those huts, but then she just came out of the wheelchair and contact then almost on her knees going there and being held by friends. It's just such a thing in her, in her life like, hey, I can do this. I am able to do this. Reflection, it's a big thing in, in special ed, big thing in outdoor education, thinking it through. We have certain specific moments where it's more kind of guided, um, but then also sometimes it comes just spontaneously. Students, when we as a teachers or assistant teacher are aware of it, ask, hey, wow, you did well. What did you think about the length of the trip? Then they start taking it, they, they learn by example. Allowing to give it a try. So, you know, we are allowed to mess up. My beloved colleagues there, they wanted to do it by themselves, said just give it a try. I'm a little bit taller, I can do it like this, but I said just go for it. And then, this is the trailer I was talking about, our Tsiritevalava, so you can see we have a few kota telts at school, we have sauna telt now, and there you might see, you know, do you use them a lot? This sauna telt, it's up like nine weeks in autumn. We often take it in the winter camps as well. So it's like once you get the material, you really need to use it as well. It's not that we buy just for buying, but just some students, it's great fun just to put it up together. And all the equipment you see here, it fits in the trailer, so it can be moved from one place to the other, which makes it rather convenient. And the last one, giving it a treat. Giving each other a treat, giving somebody else a treat. This was pizza made on Trangia, Panna Pizza. It was quite of a, quite of a job. <laughs> one of our colleagues, he did a brilliant job. And this one I enjoy a lot. We did evening night canyoning. So it looks darker than it is, but boat is just lighted with the light in there, and it's just magic. It's the ones who didn't go on the water, you saw three boats, different colors, go over the water close to the beach. It was just like, it was like the dance we had here from the two gentlemen. 
an hour ago. Like they were running around one place to the other and there was no music on the lake, but the music was just nature around us. That's it. I think one minute you said, eh? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Hopefully you got something out of there. I think there is time for a few questions, right? Oh, yes. But first, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Kiitos. Ole hyvä.